Let us now talk about rule and act consequentialism. Before that, let us uh, come to uh, uh, the situation, why we need to make a distinction between, as we mentioned on the slide, between uh, rule and act consequentialism. Now, very often, we have a difference between the actual consequence, very often we have a difference between the actual consequence and the expected consequence. Now, considering this, we see that, well, uh, uh, let me uh, take an example. See, a government policy has uh, uh, been formed with the expectation that it, uh, with certain expectations. Let us say, uh, to uh, uplift the minimal uh, sustenance uh, salaries paid or to provide minimum uh, 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 emoluments to a uh, to the, to the uh, countrymen at large, who are perhaps unemployed. Now, this is the uh, expected consequence, but what happens? Let us assume that it is, uh, the actual consequence happens that uh, it uh, increases indolence, it kills entrepreneurship, it kills enterprise and it uh, encourages sloth amongst people. Now, there is clearly a distinction between therefore, actual and expected consequences. Now, coming uh, uh, in such a case, uh, where, how do we uh, judge between uh, the difference between actual, uh, uh, how, how, which consequence is to be taken as the primary consequence for judging the moral character of these actions? Is it the actual consequence or the expected consequence? There are many, uh, many questions that consequentialism, consequentialism raises. Uh, one of them is perhaps that, uh, well, do we actually uh, sit and meditate upon the consequence of each act that we do. Now, when we talk about act consequentialism, we talk about uh, such a way of uh, taking decisions, where each act is meditated upon as to what consequences it would bring along, and thereby those consequences are the motivators for the action. Now, this as we see is generally not a, uh, 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 the usual way we go about we go about something called rule consequentialism. Rule consequentialism is when uh, each, each uh, agent or decision making uh, entity, be it a person, be it a body, be it a collective uh, or be it an association or be it an entire government. Well, they have seen that certain kinds of uh, 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 acts have led to a certain kind of consequences in the long run and therefore, it is better to follow uh, this pattern, which is framed under a rule and thereof, uh, rule consequentialism comes into existence. Now, let me take this, uh, uh, give you an example. Now, if we have seen that, well, in a particular instance, if, if lying is more profitable to me than to speaking the truth, I would as an act consequentialist decide that, well, let me lie for this instance and I get uh, the consequence that I desire. Uh, suppose, I have taken a loan and I, I have uh, knowingly lied that I will be returning it, whereas I know that I have no means of returning it. Now, here uh, the consequence is um, good for me. So, as an act consequentialist, I decide that, well, I will lie now, because this act brings me uh, a, con a desirable consequence. So, as a consequentialist uh, and Dis, uh, deciding that con the, by consequentialism, I mean the uh, happiness that brought about it by it. So, strictly a hedonist or a utilitarian, I, I would take a loan, uh, falsely promising to repay it. Now, is surely consequentialism is not this uh, fallacious or though so easy to falsify? The consequentialist answer that, well, we need to uh, frame something called rule consequentialism. We need to frame that, well, if I take this loan just this time and I see that I get my con uh, the happiness that I seek without repaying the loan, I get happy this time. But surely next time, nobody is going to loan anything to me. So, in the long run, when these cycles are repeated, I find that I am actually having uh, consequences that I do not desire, because no more, uh, no one is uh, giving me loans anymore. So, the rule consequentialist would say that, well, I need to uh, stick to my promise, because the desirable consequences that I require are not just for this act, but for the series of acts that I would ever take place. 
The same thing is with uh, uh, government policies that we frame rules, because these rules would bring us consequences that we desire. And uh, act consequentialist perhaps is seeing uh, the, the act in isolation of uh, the continuity of acts that take place. So, rule consequentialist in a way brings about uh, a rationalization and brings about a claim that well, uh, there are certain rules that to, are to be followed to bring about uh, consequences that we uh, desire. Now, uh, there are ag again certain other questions that uh, consequentialism faces, that how does a consequentialist explain justice or rights, uh, notions like these in, in, uh, mm, in, their, uh, in their paradigm, that well, what is it to be just? just is to have just consequences, but what is again just consequences? We will talk about it in the next slide, when we talk about that does consequentialist actually assume uh, naturalism, or does it have, uh, uh, does, does it uh, deny atom, um, uh, moral atomism? We will talk about that in the next slide. So, apart from that, the consequentialist also faces this dilemma, when he wants to talk about uh, consequences for whom? Is it for the agent, or is it for consequences which are independent of the agent? Now, uh, the role of the agent in consequentialism, is it uh, agent relative or agent neutral? Now, if it is agent relative, then it is my consequences, or consequences for us. So, this would actually be consequences for me. Now, which of these two do we mean, whether it is consequences for me, or consequences for us, or for a more uh, uh, inclusive consequentialist, consequences for everyone. This is just to state that, well, consequentialism is not denying, denying uh, good motives, good motives as we talk about. When, when we talk about say, uh, why should, why, why, why do you want to save the planet? Well, it, there can be a consequentialist answer to that. The consequentialist would say that, well, I want to save this planet, because uh, it would bring happiness to all, all who are existing now, and all who are to exist in the future. So, here the domain is the largest. So, a kind of a universal concern can also be understood in the consequentialist uh, framework. Uh, consequences for me, suppose I want something for myself. So, now, that is uh, the agent for, uh, the reason for doing something. Now, uh, we want the future uh, generations to uh, relish the fruits of uh, science and technology. So, we try not to overdo, uh, overuse nature to, to, to cause its, uh, uh, to cause its end, and thereby preventing the future generations from enjoying the planet. So, this is an example of having consequences for everyone, of being concerned for everyone. So, uh, it uh, uh, depends that how we understand consequentialism. Will it be for me, or will it be for us, or will it be for everyone? So, uh, consequentialism has a various strains. Now, coming back to relation between equality and consequentialism. Does, is equality a consequence? That what, as we talked about earlier, that what is the content of the consequence? Now, one of the content of the consequences we talked about was uh, perfectionism, that we keep trying till we attain perfectionism. Other one was happiness, and now there can be a third one, which is equality. That we act, so that uh, there is an equality uh, achieved between the ends. Now, let us go further to find out what is meant by uh, uh, consequentialism. Okay, now, we will talk about that are there any fundamental issues, that we are left with. Now, there are two fundamental issues, that I would like you to dwell uh, upon. That, is there any 
ultimate or sustainable distinction between consequentialists and deontologists. Now, consequentialists and non-consequentialists are supposed to be two separate domains. How are we going to agree with the, uh, how, how is this confusion arise that, well there is a difference between, uh, when we question that there is there really a difference between consequentialist and a non-consequentialist. This, we will take up this issue further when we talk about deontologists or non-consequentialists. But for the moment, let me uh, give a brief remark on this issue, that are we seeing that, well we took the example of uh, the person keeping his promises while taking a loan. Now, the reason for that, that keeping promises uh, entails uh, a higher credit rating for future or better credit rating for future requirements. Now, even a deontologist would claim that one should not uh, uh, break one's commitment. Now, uh, the uh, rule, deon uh, rule uh, consequentialist could say that, well this is exactly the same rule that uh, the rule consequentialist uh, subscribes to, only the justification being that these kind of rules become. Uh, essential for a good life. So, that one should not steal, the usual dictums that we come across, that one should not steal, one should not lie, are usual dictums for uh, uh, having a better life for all. Now, the deontologist also says that, well these, uh, these are some things which are intrinsically right and should not be violated. Now, it can, a point can be made that perhaps, uh, rule cons uh, uh, perhaps consequentialists or more ap uh, appropriately rule consequentialists are saying the same thing as deontologists or non-consequentialists. Now, their claims could be that well, uh, the deontological claims are nothing but the uh, socialization and internalization of rule consequentialism. Let me write that down. Deontological claims are nothing but the socialized, internalized practices in a society, which originate from from rule consequentialism. So, rule consequentialism says that it is more profitable not to uh, break one's commitments. And this becomes internalized as a deontological claim that one, it is simply uh, un uh, de deniably wrong to break one's commitments. Now, we come to another, another question that can consequentialists regard any moral property as fundamental. Now, if the uh, uh, consequentialists regard any moral property as fundamental, why does this question arise? Well, this question arises because, now uh, whatever be the act, it leads to a consequence. And we judge the act by the consequence. Now, the act, the judgment on the act, moral quality, this is a moral judgment. But, this consequence seems to be a natural uh, fact. All right. Now, let me simplify. Now, if this act is uh, that it is wrong to break one's commitments, or this act is breaking one's commitment, the consequence is uh, a denial or, or a fall in trust levels, right, and a reduction in uh, happiness. Now, reduction in happiness is a natural fact, that well, there, there is a reduction in uh, happiness and therefore, that is wrong. The act itself is 
wrong or whatever moral judgment that we make on it. So, this is an example where uh, consequentialist is a naturalist. We will talk about it in further details, but uh, we should be uh, uh, mildly aware of it that naturalism is uh, reducing moral properties to natural properties. Now, when uh, moral properties are reduced to natural properties, they are called, uh, that is called naturalism. Now, very often consequentialists are naturalists, but that does not mean that consequentialism requires one to be naturalist. If the consequence itself is a conformity to a, a, a law book or a conformity to a moral claim uh, or any other non-natural conformity, it comes out to be a consequentialist act. Now, some, when somebody falls, uh, follows a rule book with the aim being that, well, I should confirm to the followings of a rule book and I am doing this act because this conse the consequence of which is uh, that it confirms to the law book. So, that is an example of a consequentialist who is not a naturalist. We will talk about this in detail when we talk about metaethics. So, for now, we have seen the basic issues that concern uh, consequentialism. And now, we go ahead in uh, talking about the first domain of consequentialism or first description of what consequences are that is hedonism.